crime trends that appear to be getting a little bit more active in the city of Tampa. Uh, it's a very disturbing and alarming trend. I call it a trend because there's a lot of cases, but I don't think they're necessarily related. I think that it's more of a trend based on geography. What's happening is our local food delivery, um, people that work for local food delivery, pizzas, um, oriental foods, oriental restaurants, are getting robbed at gunpoint when they're making their deliveries. Um, the reason why I call it a disturbing trend is obviously we are here today to talk to you guys about the fact that these people are out there working for these companies, responding to citizens that are calling for a legitimate food delivery and then not even allowing the delivery to happen. They're getting violently robbed at gunpoint um, throughout the city. We have 13 cases since the end of October. Most of the robberies are taking place in our crime-plagued areas throughout the city. And like I said earlier, we don't believe that this is a pattern necessarily, but we believe this is more of a trend. It appears that word is spreading on the street that this is kind of a easy type of a crime to commit. And just like a lot of our criminals tend to do, they are preying upon the vulnerability of our, of our hopeless, uh, helpless, excuse me, delivery drivers. Um, obviously, we have investigations into these robberies. We are coming up slightly shorthanded, unfortunately, with our leads. We are looking at forensics. We are looking at um, known offenders that reside in the area. We are looking at previous offenders that have matched this modus operandi, if you will. Um, we have had pizza delivery robberies historically in the city of Tampa, but not so much as alarming as we've had since the end of January. The majority of these cases have happened since the end of January, since the beginning of this year, which is why we're here today. So our increased um, police presence in the area, our looking at forensics, our following up on our known offenders and all of our leads are coming up for the, for the most part empty handed right now, which is why we are reaching out to the community to try to get some assistance in gathering up some leads. A lot of these bad guys tend to brag about their, their acts um, and we're looking for the community if they hear something or they know something about who's doing this to let us know. The tips can come in anonymously. They can go in through Crime Stoppers or we have a Tampa Police Department app on, on your, that you can download on a smartphone. Every one of those tips that comes into the police department is completely anonymous. So the community needs to know that if they hear anything at all and they wish to report it to us, we can follow up on it, that their information will be held in strict anonymity. They will not be, will not be given up. Um, we have crime prevention teams here with me today, and what we're going to do besides asking the community for help is we are going to reach out to a lot of these local businesses, a lot of these local restaurants, and we're going to try to educate the people that work there of some things to look for to keep themselves a little bit safer when they're possibly, um, possibly about to be a victim of a robbery. So what, um, what crime prevention is going to do today is they're going to give some local businesses, a flyer. The flyer is a, a two-fold flyer. Part one has some, some flags, if you will, that would, that would lead the business taking the call that it might be something suspicious going on. Um, what we're going to educate the businesses to do is to call the phone number back, um, try to get a call back, try to get verification that this is in fact a legitimate, um, a legitimate delivery call. We are, um, obviously a lot of the businesses already have their customer base in their computer system, but we're going to encourage the businesses to possibly take it a step further and maybe verify the address on Google or the property appraiser. Uh, a, lot of these, a lot of these delivery drivers are being victimized at either vacant addresses or addresses that do not exist whatsoever. Um, we're going to advise the businesses to have their drivers carry a very small amount of cash on them not have a lot of money um, ready for them to, in the event to, to minimize the, uh, the victimization. And then we would probably tell the people that are ordering the pizza or the, or the Chinese food that our drivers are only carrying $20 or less, something to that effect. We're gonna leave it up to the individual businesses of how they wanna do it. We're just gonna give some tips 
for what they can do to try to prevent these crimes. Um, we're going to ask the caller for a description of the residence. You know, are we coming to a duplex or are we coming to a single family home? Um, obviously, a lot of a lot of times the delivery drivers are summoned just to a intersection, and that would be like a red flag for the businesses not to deliver through just an intersection. Um, we are encouraging the businesses that if they feel they're being set up for a robbery or if this entire set of circumstances is way too suspicious to not even take the chance of delivering the food just to call 911 and get us involved. So we have the flyers here we can show you. It has the, has the tips to keep the delivery drivers safe. And we are um, obviously making this a citywide effort. We have all three district crime prevention teams here. We are, since this is a citywide trend, we are making this a citywide effort to try to investigate it on our end but also um, get, a, get a little bit ahead of the curve on a crime prevention end. And with that being said, I'll uh, take questions. So um, <coughs> what's happening is these delivery drivers are, or these companies are being called and it's, it's from the beginning it's a setup, basically? It, it's, it appears to be from the beginning it's a setup for some of them. Some of them are legitimate deliveries and they're being intercepted in the parking lots or they're being intercepted before they get up to the front door. Um, the, that's why I call it a trend and not necessarily a pattern. The, the MO in each of the cases is a little bit different, but a lot of the cases are to empty residences or to intersections, and a lot of the phone numbers are blocked phone numbers or prepaid cell phones that we're not able to get leads on. What kind of tips are you hoping to get from the public? Anything they can give us. Um, we, we would love names, nicknames, um, you know, I mean, I know that it's difficult for the public to, to, to tell on somebody, but I need everybody to understand that these delivery drivers are out there trying to make a living, and they're out there being victimized for no other reason than the fact that they have some cash in their pocket, and they have some food that they're about to deliver. And it doesn't get much worse than that than to victimize someone who's trying to legitimately make a living and in such a terrorizing way. Yeah, and most of these are, are at gunpoint, or all of them? They're all, they're all involving a firearm, yes. All 13 of them. And is the department looking at what any other um, police departments across the country have done to try and, because I know this is, I'm sure this is a problem elsewhere as well, have you guys looked to, to what other, what, what has been working in other cities too? Um, yeah, our detectives are looking at other, you know, other agencies that are experiencing similar patterns. And like I said earlier, robbing delivery drivers because they do have cash on them is not something that's new. It's just that we've seen a significant increase in the city since the end of, since the beginning of the year, which is why we're trying to get ahead of the curve ball while we wait on some of our investigative leads to come in. And how much cash do they usually carry with them? It varies, but it is cash, and you know, a lot of people these days don't really carry a lot of cash on them, but the delivery driver always has to be ready to make change, so I think it's just a very easy crime of opportunity, whether they're being set up for it or they're just being intercepted in an apartment complex parking lot or whatever, either way, it's just a crime of opportunity. So you say if they were to like announce that they make that phone call, oh, we only carry $20 or less, that would deter it a lot? It could. I mean, I think that we're looking outside the box here to look for ways to, to curb the behavior, no matter how we do it. And if, you know, if the person doing the setup thinks that the delivery driver isn't going to have more than $20 on him, maybe he won't pull out a gun and, you know, risk spending the rest of his life in prison over $20. Do you have any indication of how many of the robberies are committed by the same that's difficult to say. Some of them share similar geography, but the suspect descriptions very widely vary. Um, if you guys could imagine being that delivery driver, it's dark, you know, he's, he's, he's pulling up, he's ordering a pizza, he gets a gun stuck in his face. The last thing he's doing is, is trying to, you know, study the description of the person that's robbing him. Um, that's what's making these cases very challenging. We're going to try to educate the businesses today that if you do get challenged by somebody with a gun, give them what they want, try to look at the person, try to get a decent description, 
get out of the area, and then call 911 from a safe location. Has any of the delivery uh, people have been hurt in any way, you know, punched, pushed, and, um, no, that you know of? One of them was, um, you know, a couple of them had the guns pointed to their head, to their neck. Um, one unfortunate driver did get a couple of shots fired at him as he was fleeing. So we're hoping to get ahead of this curveball before the, before the, the robbers get any more violent. Now, do you think with just the tips you've given the businesses, like know where you're going, do you think that can prevent some of this, or is this something that it needs more than that with the public? Oh, I, I think that it's a twofold scenario. I think if the businesses are aware that there are some suspicious flags that could indicate that this might be a setup or something's not quite right, that we want to protect those delivery drivers. We want to make sure that they're not continuing to get victimized. If the business feels that something's not quite right, don't deliver the pizza, get us involved, and we'll take it from there. Um, you know, the other thing is, is the public. I, like I said earlier, I think a lot of these, a lot of these criminals tend to brag about their acts, especially the younger ones. And if somebody in the community overhears somebody talking about one of these horrific acts, give us a call, and remain anonymous, and let us work on that tip. And you want to get a handle on this before it gets worse. Absolutely, right. we have 13 now since the end of October, and we're hoping to not have any more at all. And none of the, they've been violent, but there's been shots fired in one case. Yes. And other than that, it's just brandishing a pistol. Yes. And we know it's in um, Tampa, but what specific area is being affected by this? Well, um, obviously all three districts, which is why I have them all here right now. So it is a citywide trend. But specifically, you know, East Tampa um, area, North Tampa area, um, you guys will have the, uh, the list of where they are. But they're, they're pretty much spread everywhere, which is why we call it a trend and not necessarily a pattern. Is there any um, surveillance video or anything like that that you guys can release at this time or for any of the crimes? We don't have any, none. None. I wish we did. But again, you know, we really need the community to, 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 to rally around, you know, our hardworking delivery drivers and, you know, understand that, you know, the, the majority of these deliveries are all legitimate. You know, people are ordering food. This has been going on forever, but there are, you know, the few criminals out there that are preying on these hardworking men and women, and those are the people that we want to stop.